Mike from All That Remains. Yes, sir. We are currently in Montreal. You're on tour with uh, Five Finger Death Punch. How's that going so far? Great. Uh, best tour, probably the best tour we've done in America. Yeah. Ever. I know, America slash Canada. Um, yeah, just huge shows, tons of friends. Uh, up in about two weeks then you have obviously Christmas break what do you do for 2012 uh, write an album I'm gonna write okay. for the first few months and then record probably hopefully April or May and then uh, wait for it to come out and then you know repeat the cycle now the, the last album was 2010 yep and one of the singles uh, what's it called last uh, last time time uh, hit active rock radio in July yep did very well yeah, Hold On and The Last Time, both actually, right. both went top ten. Now, what do you plan on doing for the next album? Is it more of the same, or are you trying more experimentation, or...? Uh, I'm just going to write and just let whatever comes out. It's, we always just play whatever comes out, so it's never, uh... I don't know, we don't, we don't have, like, meetings beforehand saying, like, you know, we want, okay. we're going to do this, and we're going to do this, this, and it's just, like, just go in a room and check out everyone's ideas and put it together and whatever comes out comes out just let it be natural now is it, is it important for a band like you to still make albums or at some point you say well let's just go to iTunes and put out one song every like six months I don't I'm wondering when that's gonna start I think it's a waste to do an album yeah okay cuz uh, you spend all this time and it's like you got to you got your your label you know we need 13 songs you know we need bonus tracks for Japan right. and we need this and stuff and you got your label breathing down your neck on this deadline and you you got to write all these songs you got to cram them all in as quickly as you can and then you put a record out and everyone buys the single or the right. the video off of iTunes right. and then there's like always 8 to 10 songs that go to waste yeah so i the whole concept of the full album at this point for me sucks i hate it but I still like it's weird because I like when if a band I like comes out with a record I want to hear a whole record so right. you know that's like I'm a hypocrite but uh, it's like well, yeah but it's when you're writing albums and you're like you know you're slaving over these songs and you're just thinking them all to death and you can't sleep at night because you're thinking them all to death and it's just like it's driving everybody crazy everyone's fighting about it and you're, and finally it gets done and you're like all right cool it's a big relief and it gets done but you have 12 songs in the album and people listen to two of them. You know, so it's it's. it's is kind that of maybe part of the problem? Is that albums, when the CD came out, started becoming 15, 16 songs, and people just went, oh, maybe it's time to go back to nine songs like Aerosmith Rocks or something. Oh yeah, I don't think I hate like. It's usually in a contract that you need a certain amount, which is a okay. bummer because if it was up to me, I'd do the bare, you know, eight songs as an album. All right, I would man. I would just do that because like. There's just no need to put any more out. People don't have the attention span anymore. It's just the way it is. And we're lucky enough now. We have five records and ten years of touring. We have a catalog, a lot of singles that people know. So we can put a set list together where most most songs people are going to recognize. Right. You can keep the energy going the whole set. you got a lot of new bands that are like, they got a hit single right now, and it's like one or two albums out. And it's just like... What do you do for another 45 minutes, you know? It's like, how do you entertain people? You gotta come up with like a gimmick <laughs> to get to get people like, to keep them interested for an hour or something, you know? Now, you've been on it, uh, like you just said, for about 10 years. What do you need to do to get you that next level, to get you into that sort of Metallica, Megadeth, that sort of super heavy metal band status? Uh, that one I don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, that's we, tough, we, huh? We've skipped levels to this point. Right. Like, and I, for us, it's just been songs. That just make songs that people remember. And that's always worked for us. We've never dressed a certain way. We've never had like, oh, that band has a lot of tattoos or funny haircuts. So we don't, we've never had that. We don't do choreographed moves on stage or nothing like that. So what's always worked for us to progress is just songs that people remember. Right. And it's just been a, a body of work over the last 10 years. So 
there's that for us now for us to like obviously for me to say what we need to do to get to the metallica size right. is this we would have already done that if i knew right so, <laughs> but like i said back to the attention span thing in this day and age bands can't even really get that big anymore you know you got your biggest bands out right now which is five finger death punch and heavy music five finger death punch have been sevenfold you know slip not disturbed and it's like even those bands, you know, you put them in a twenty thousand seat arena. There's not twenty thousand people there. There's like, so, and d depending on the city, you know, we played lots of arena shows with Slipknot where there's been three thousand people in the arena, you know, in a ten thousand seat arena. Right. And like, I'm not knocking them or nothing. They're a huge band. I love, I love that band. I think Five Finger guys are great. But we play these arenas, and you know, if there's four or five thousand people in them, that's a huge show. You don't see bigger than that really anymore. Which is unless, strange, unless it's Metallica. But they have 30 years of history. Because they keep saying that the live show and selling of merchandise has replaced albums in terms of making money for bands, and yet. Yet the, the shows are empty. Right. Yeah, it's like you see Guns N' Roses, we were talking about Guns N' Roses right. before the interview. Those arenas aren't full. No. Nowhere. No, I mean, uh, I saw a show about a week ago and it was about 80% capacity. About 7,500 out of a 9,000 place. Which is, that's really good. Right. That's great, actually, because I saw, I saw Guns N' Roses in Worcester five years ago. There was wasn't even close to full. I've seen pictures on this tour that they're doing right now is not even close to full. So now, it's like, now, let's talk about them a little bit. You're a big fan. Yeah, my how, favorite band. How do you uh, discover them, and what do you think of what's going on with them now? Uh, I just got a, t I got a tape when I was eight years old with a uh, great white on in one half, and the other half had Appetite for Destruction. We know why that is. <laughs> Same manager. There you go. Well, it wasn't even a somebody like a, like my cousin made it or something. Okay, but uh. Yeah, I just couldn't stop listening to it, and it's been obsessed ever since. I got saw Slash on TV, and I was like, "That's it." Do you have an opinion on the Chinese Democracy, the album that I they love put it. out? I think, I think it's, it's great. Everybody, you know, everybody went into it thinking it was going to be. Uh, if it's not Appetite for Destruction, it sucks. Right. And it's not Appetite for Destruction, and it wasn't going to be Appetite for Destruction. Right. It's, but it's great. <laughs> Axel's amazing, amazing lyrics. The, the some of the parts, everything's great on it. There's only like there's like two songs on it that I'm just like, eh, you know, whatever. But, but I love the whole record. Uh, yeah, so do I. I mean, if you look compared to a Use Your Illusion two or the the blue one, whatever, this yeah. one has better songs on it. Some of them, yeah, some of them are great. I'm, I'm such a super fan. I love all the songs on Use Your Illusions. And a lot of people said the Use Your Illusions were too, there's too many songs, it was too watered down. I disagree. Okay. I, can, I can find the good in everything on, <laughs> in those records. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, people went into the Chinese democracy with the wrong mentality. It did take too long. Yeah. It took way too long, obviously, but because it took so long, everyone went into it with the, completely the wrong mindset of what it was going to be and what it should be, and it just didn't work. Yeah, but well. If you just sit there and go, I want to hear some good songs, and just take it for that, you're going to hear good songs, because they're now, great songs. Speaking of taking time to make an album, could you ever see yourself taking 14 years to make an album? No, we, we took, on this last one, we had a, more time than we usually have, and we had like three months to write it I think and then I think we we're in the studio for two months and I was so sick of like by the time it was just about done being recorded I was so sick of, I was like I can't believe how long this is taking so I don't, I don't understand how be a band can even take a year or two to right. do one I, I, I get so sick of like thinking it to death it just drives me nuts I just want to get it done now I don't going, think anything needs that much time going into 2012 when you make your new record do you think you might just want to do live on the floor just get the guys in there and let's plug and play and forget all this pro tool stuff nah, that'll never happen no <laughs> metal's so robotic you can't, you can't put out a sloppy record then you're just going to sound like an ass <laughs> that's an interesting comment that it's robotic isn't the whole uh, fun of uh, metal that it's supposed to be this angst and it's just people who plug in and yeah, it's supposed to be all raw and everything right. it's not <laughs> okay everything anything in the studio now is just everything's beat detected and you know auto-tuned and pro tool pitch and correct yeah, and just, everything's like that every single band does it and the bands that say they don't do it are lying and the only bands that say they do it say they don't do it and are actually telling the truth you can tell because you can hear it and you're just like wow that's not right they're unsigned bands and we and we, we do a lot of records with adam from uh, kill switch right. engage and he's saw uh, his ear is insane and if you don't play if you don't play guitar the part like a robot, you know, he thinks you suck. You know, like, oh, God, he's a terrible guitar player. Is that how you like to play, though? I mean, do you like no, that? No, I hate it. Okay. And it's it's frustrating to track because you can't, nobody can play like a computer. And Adam's very picky with his ear. And, like, if you don't play like a computer, he's just like, oh, wow, you sound terrible. You know? Now, if you've done that with him on, on the past albums that you've worked with him, how do you translate that into the live setting, then? 
Well, in a lot of you, just lie gotta, you gotta not think of it. That you just do it. You do the best okay. you can. And like Adam will joke with me. He's one, I live with him. He's okay. one of my best friends. And he'll come see us play, and he'll sit on the side of the stage and just sit there and shake his head and thumbs down, <laughs> just the whole time. And you gotta put that out of your head and not think. Because if you think like, oh, I gotta play like a robot, Adam's watching me right now. Then you're just gonna make it even worse. Because Adam, he freaks Ollie out. Well, there you go. It's the, it's the, it's the uh, album title for the next album. Play like a robot. Yeah. By, uh, yeah. If Adam's on the stage and Ollie sees him, and Ollie gets all nervous. <laughs> <laughs> now, is there anything else that we need to, to talk about or plug? Are you doing anything uh, by yourself, solo, or playing with anybody else on the, their album as a guest? No, not that I'm aware of. I go home, me and my friend Chris at home have a little, like, a, we do, a, like, acoustic stuff. We'll go to bars right. and just play, like, pop covers just because it's fun and you get free beer. Okay. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Yeah, it's nothing, uh, you know, it's nothing that I'm like, you know, come check it out. We're breaking new grounds. <laughs> now, in the uh, background here, we got football playing. Uh, how are your Patriots going to do going into the Super Bowl this year? Uh, they're so unpredictable. They always There's always that one bad game that ruins everything. They went in, they have 14 and Two last year, they're the best team in the league, and everyone's like, "All right, no one's going to touch the Patriots." And they get beaten the first round by the Jets, and then everyone's devastated. Well, Patriots fans, at least. And uh, no, us too. Uh, it's just nobody the likes the Jets. Is. I just, I wish, I love football. It's, I'd love it. I absolutely love it. But that the fact, like, you get into the playoffs and you can have one bad day and your whole season's gone, bums me out. I wish you could do a series, like a three-game series, at least. But you know the, the game's so brutal, you can't really get away with that. Dudes are gonna die. Right. So right. they'd be playing into June at that point. Yeah. I love other sports. You know, you got the best of seven series. You know, it's like the team has a bad night, you get a chance to redeem yourself. And in football, it's just like boom, one bad day, season over. And that sucks, especially when you got a team like the Patriots last year, who were the best team in the league. And it's just like, oh, they just couldn't put it together for three hours out of the whole year, year. and then it's gone it's the whole year all your chances are gone so that drives me nuts but i don't know i don't know i i want to see you know they're doing great this year again so i want to say yeah they're gonna win the super bowl because i think that every year because they're the patriots but it's not so bad knows? you Once. know when you're watching the bruins and the habs playing into june you're like ah, is that right or it's, yeah. it's time to end this let's go back to two out of three kind of thing nah i don't yeah. playoffs for me i like they, they, they go by too fast all right yeah I'm just, I'm just like that. I'm a sports freak. No, well, thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, any websites you want to plug real quick? Uh, we got the facebook.com slash all the remains and then uh, all the remains online.com where you can find out all the shows and all the video updates and all that stuff. So that's about it. Perfect. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah.